Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my playlist where I'm covering all about different Node.js ORMs. Maybe MySQL, Nexus, a query builder, Prisma, Type ORM, SQLite. Okay, so I have already covered two different videos. Now this is the third video and what we are going to talk about is how Node.js behaves without ORM ODM libraries. Let's say you are writing a simple Node.js application and you wanted to connect to MySQL. So there is already a MySQL client library. You don't need to look for SQLize, type ORM and Prisma, all these things. You can simply use MySQL to or MySQL library to connect to your MySQL database and do the query. Similarly, for the Postgres, there is a PZ. PZ is a library name which can help you to connect to the Postgres. Similarly, for MongoDB, there is a MongoDB client library. So Mongo, SQLize, type ORM, these are just a ORM ODM libraries. They are helping you to run the migrations, do the query, get the data, insert, update, delete, all different kind of operations and write the query. I mean, without writing the query, without exposing the actual interface, what they are exposing is the object relational mapping. That's why they are called ORM. Let's say SQLize, type ORM. These are exposing the entity tables in form of classes. So that you can do a dot find, dot remove, dot update, dot delete, all those different operations on the ES6 class. You don't need to worry much about, okay, you need to write a query, then execute it, then get the results and all these things because the ORM library is managing all these things, transactions, migrations, seeders, all these things are managed by ORM libraries. But before understanding the ORM, first our target should be how it works without ORM. Let's say we don't have type ORM, SQLize, Prisma and all these different libraries, then how it is going to work? So that thing we are going to take a look in this video. And our focus will be first to have a basic setup. Okay. So in setup, maybe let, let's say I'm writing a simple REST API with uh, Node.js and MySQL, Node.js and Postgres, Node.js and MongoDB, right? So what you need to have, you need to have MongoDB somewhere running, uh, MySQL somewhere running and Postgres. And the simplest way to run this is using Docker. If you're not familiar with the Docker, that is fine because it's just a one command you need to run and that will help you to get the container for Postgres, for MySQL, for MongoDB. So this is my simple Docker Compose YML file. It does contain only Mongo and the Postgres definition. Then I have my override file that defines, okay, this is the MongoDB, then you do get the container names, volumes, networks, mapping because this is not our target. We are not going to talk about this. You just do Docker Compose up and you will get the MongoDB container and the Postgres container. This is what we need, right? We, we need, when we are talking about Node.js with the Postgres, Node.js with MySQL, we need an endpoint where our MySQL is running, where the Postgres is running, where the MongoDB is running. Once we have these things running, now what is needed is, okay, I will write my controller services, inside services, I will connect to the database like MongoDB. We are not going to use Mongoose, SQLize, Type ORM. We are going to use uh, these basic utility libraries which are provided by MongoDB, uh, which are provided by MySQL and Postgres. A simple bare-bone library use where you have to write your row queries, okay? If we understood that easily, then migrating to these ORMs is very easy. Okay, so what we are going to do this, our containers are up and running. You can see with, there is no any error, ORM Mongo is up, ORM Postgres is up. That means I can go ahead and write a simple express application. And I'm not going to talk about a lot about express and all these things. Express is not just framework. You can write a simple current operation there. Our main focus is how without ORM we are doing the same thing like writing an API even you can write a whole production application by just using the MySQL client library you can manage the migration and seeders with the SQLize type or other additional libraries for, so first we are going to start with uh, Node.js Express Mongo okay we already have a Mongo library Mongo container up and running so now what next thing we are going to do is we just write a simple route 
and okay let's do this so we are going to write a simple express server before that we can create a package.json and there we can define all our dependencies okay so here we can do npm init inside that project and populate all the dependencies we need for the mongodb okay let's go inside node express mongodb and then we we'll just populate some dependencies express mongodb we can just do npm in it it will give us the options okay what all different kind of project you wanted to build just enter 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 yes okay i got the dependencies now what i need to install npm install minus minus save these are dependencies not dev dependencies so i will install express i will install mongodb because that is the client which is going to talk to my mongodb server and i can get body parser to extract out the payload from the body and we can also use this happy js library happy joy library for payload validation that's it this is pretty much we need in our package.json for the express mongo app <coughs> So this will get installed. Now we can simply go ahead and start writing our simple express server. Maybe I will just uh, include this because we are not learning how to write express applications. So bare bone structure is going to be the same for all the applications we are going to write. So index.js and here we can just say, okay, I have, I got the express instance, then app new express and then in it. Now here you can see I'm not doing anything three lines of code express then get the express instance app dot relation but I will be listening to this app only if my database connection might. So here uh, let's create our dbgs file and our routes because we have already have index.js which is nothing but a bare bone uh, express server and uh, we are going to start the application server once our database connection is received okay so let's create our db.js file and what we are going to do here is we already have a mongodb up and running so we will require things from our client which is mongodb so what all we need is mongo client mongodb client here Okay, and now we can just define connection URI and all these things. Connection URI is simple, it is MongoDB localhost and port is 27017. And now what we need to do here is let's connect to the MongoDB client. We already have an init method defined, so const init simple arrow function we can create a db instance let's say this is my db instance and here inside this we can use mongo client which we have declared on the top let's keep it mongo client okay so how we connect mongo client dot connect is a method and it is taking so mongo mongo client dot connect we will just pass our connection uri and then the arguments which is i think use new url parser so that is coming up now this is true and you can see this connect is going to return a promise either you use async await or something here we are writing everything based on promises so for now let's keep it in the promise okay here we are going to get the client and once we receive the client we can say db equal to client.db and the name of your database is so now d this db instance has now become powerful because now it has a db connection everything is there now we can simply do the query so let's say in this project we have a simple collection store <coughs> so 
let's say we have a simple collection store which has an item name and the quantity so we can write our simple methods like insert item insert item will do is it will have some payload and first we will try to get the collection based on db utility db dot collection and because it's not typescript so you will not get auto complete we are getting items okay and from the items we can actually insert update delete all these methods so here what we can do is return collection dot insert one and pass your item which you are getting from your request body so this is one method similarly i have two more insert item so another can be get items okay so what you are doing here in the get items is db collection items and here it will be simple collection dot find okay give me all the items and convert that into array right and then we have update item that is also same update item here it will be update based on id and i'm updating the quantity let's call it as update quantity method update quantity we got the items collection and then here collection dot update one based on one particular criteria so here i'm passing where underscore id is same as the object id object id of this id we are passing if this is true then what you need to do is increase so we are going to use increment operator from mongodb and increase the quantity okay so this object id we can get okay already added this is repetition yes so we got all the methods update quantity update quantity insert quantity insert item and delete item we don't need get items we have now we can simply export all these things using module.exports we are uh, we have all these methods in it insert item get items and okay now we'll go to our routes our database is done kind of with the connection with the different methods you can write that if you are writing a proper application you can put them in a separate file separate models okay we are not using mongoose model it just like we can just create a simple separate separate services if you have multiple collections in the mongodb database here is our route and in the routes the structure is same we are going to get the express router and define all the insert update delete so first of all const express we can get few things from here so we are starting the route and here we need to use joy for payload validation require happy joy so this is good and we are importing a couple of methods from db so we can get all these together okay so what all methods we are exporting from here we can copy at least the insert get and update go to your routes right now it's all about like you will write express router here we'll let's finish this quickly and then we will see this const router equal to express dot router and then you will just define router dot get uh, post and update all these different operations and here is my schema item schema is nothing but it is using joy dot object dot keys all these keys i am defining 
okay let's say i have a name so name is joy dot string and that should be required and then quantity so it is joy dot number joy dot number dot integer dot min so this is how you can do the validation and we can define all our methods let's say the post post means you just simply do router dot post your method okay i have items and this is my callback inside i have a request and response simple i will get the item here from the body and then i can just do the validation so here we have item schema so we can do the validation item schema dot validate and pass the payload which we are getting from request dot body if we are getting error result dot error is there that means it's a bad request response dot status 400 dot end if everything is fine we will call this method which is insert item we will pass the item and this is promise based so if everything is fine we will get this otherwise it's going to in the catch block i always prefer to write it all these things with the sync of it but for now this is fine response dot status uh, let's say put 500 dot end here i can say response dot status dot end okay so this is similarly you can define the get all and update so what we are going to do here is let's see all these things in action so here instead of items you can do get get item and your response will be you will be calling get items you don't need anything in the body and all you just simply call get items and promise dot then and you will send this data back which you are getting okay similarly you can do the update so this is simple so now we can run this example we have everything ready so how we do it node index.js okay so our server is starting listening on port 3000 okay so now you can use either postman or there is a nice add-on available on vs code which is going to help you in making the http request like this send request so it is going to make this simple api call this is like if you wanted to update a particular quantity then send request right and this is like if you wanted to create a new item quantities like let's say 10 you can click on send request this is done now send request get the latest items Ten. you can just update this id with the new value i mean it will just increase the quantity by 3 or let's say 10 this is the last method like update quantity okay and send request now get all them get all these again and you can see 20 right so our apis are working that's the whole objective of uh, this exercise that you should understand how actually we make the connection using this native client okay not with the help of mongoose or any other library this is how we do it let me close all these now the same thing we can do with the postgres and mysql postgres you need a pg client for mysql you need a mysql so the same express server what you need is instead of mongodb you will be connecting with the pg by creating the connection pool and all in uh, even it when we talks about mysql then here the library will be different that's it the, all the other things are going to be the same your rest apis can be same or different you can create different kind of crud to have basic understanding and this is like a very beginner level video i don't create a lot of uh, beginner level sessions but before covering the 
advanced things on the Tycho RM SQLized Prisma, I wanted to cover how the interface between Node.js and database works with these different libraries. Okay, uh, let's see uh, Postgres in the next video, guys. We already have a container and that is up and running. So we already have Postgres server running somewhere. I mean, running on the container. So we can just use the local uh, host for connecting to the Postgres. Okay, thanks everyone. Thanks for watching.